Daniel Farker said yesterday after the Leeds United versus Hanover match that Leeds United wanted a midfielder. Also discussion around fullbacks, but that's not what we're talking about today. But this particular point on the midfielder has been especially proven today as news has come out that the Whites have had a €4 million Euro bid rejected for someone who is genuinely a great midfielder that I think we should be keeping our eye on. I'll go into all sorts of bits and bobs about this bit of news. I'll talk about who the player is, why exactly he wants the move, what he would bring to Leeds, and if he's right for us. And honestly, there's a lot to dive into around all of that in a moment. So first up, we need to talk about who exactly Leeds United have had a bid rejected for. And this is someone that you might not have heard of, because let's be honest, no one's following the Bundesliga that closely Closely, if you're a Leeds fan. The Whites have made a move for Dejan Lubacic is what I'm going to go with. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, because if not, I'm going to feel really, really bad. Uh, he is a box-to-box -box, uh, midfielder currently playing in Germany, and his sort of profile has changed from season to season. Last season, his heat map was all over the place in terms of he would cover the entire pitch. But the season before that, he seemed to be playing in a slightly different role. He'd be more over on the right-hand side, which I thought was quite interesting. Maybe he's like a right midfielder, wingy kind of thing. Very odd. Uh, the season before that, he played a sort of similar right-hand side role. I think that was part of a midfield three, though, which makes a little bit more sense. Um, last season, he was relegated with FC... Apparently, it's pronounced like Keln or Korn but we'll go with Kohn, uh, with FC Kohn, which puts him currently in the Zweite Bundesliga. And he played plenty of football there. This isn't a matter of he's leaving because he wasn't getting minutes or anything silly like that. He's made the move ultimately because he has plenty of reasons to want it. And the first one is that Kohn got relegated last season. I've not seen exactly where in the league they landed. I'm going to have a very, very quick look at that, actually, just to be 100% sure on it. But from all the information that I have seen, it wasn't exactly his fault. He was rated a 6.85 on sofa score, which is a slightly above average score. You start in like the six-ish sort of territory. Um, Colm were second bottom in the Bundesliga last season, which is not ideal, but their team was dreadful. Genuinely, the squad around him, not very good. I've watched a fair bit of the Bundesliga because work. Um, but when you consider that it wasn't particularly his fault, he did everything that he could to keep them up. And he's only got 12 months left on his contract add on to the fact that he isn't signing a new contract there because he is a high quality player that I think, in my opinion, outperformed the Colin squad a little bit. And he's got plenty of potential to play really, really well going forwards. Keep in mind as well that he's 26 years old, so he will be looking for a move that will sort of define the rest of his career at this point. I think with the potential to move elsewhere and the will to sort of prove himself, he's going to find himself a move. It's been publicly stated that he doesn't want to sign a new contract. And it's also been publicly stated that we have had a bid rejected. This was the YEP approaching Leeds United and asking, did you have a bid rejected for this guy? And the club were like, yeah, we did. Fair enough. So this isn't just rumour territory. This is, this is probably in the process of happening. And in my opinion, it is a matter of time in terms of when this move happens and a matter of where he goes. Because I don't know entirely if we are the only club with an interest, especially since he's a fairly decent standard player. And there were clubs that came up from the second Bundesliga last season that will probably be looking at someone that they are able to sort of build around and with. Very interesting, I think. Um, and then there's a question over what he brings to Leeds. Because it's all well and good saying that there's this player in Germany and he's fantastic and we love him. Um, but in reality, you need to know what sort of player you're getting. And thankfully, he's more than happy to play that aggressive attacking style of football. I had a look at his numbers. He had 1.8 progressive carries per 90 last season, which is really good for a team that only scored 28 goals across the entire season. Their attack, genuinely dreadful. Not good. Um, that ability to receive the ball and say, OK, I'll just run at you, is something that is very, very good to see from a midfielder, especially when you're going to play against a low block, which I think we will likely come up against this season because people saw that last season that worked fairly effectively against us. It might be something that clubs try again next season. In addition to that, his passing stats weren't incredible, but calling around him didn't necessarily help. His passes attempted numbers weren't that high. And having a look at his stats compared to a winger, for example, it's fairly average for stats for a winger. I think he was playing a sort of transitional midfield role where it was get the ball, get up the pitch if you can, and then look for a pass from that point onwards. His pass completion... Not the worst, 79, 80%, so reasonable enough, especially in our own half. 
And he had very, very strong expected assist numbers in the top 30% of midfielders, which is pretty nice for someone that is in a side that was playing such dire football. He's someone that is happy to receive the ball and then crack on, which in my opinion puts him more in that Joe Rothwell mould rather than an Ilya Gruev and Ethan Ampadu who are happy to play that more sitting position. I think someone that's happy to go box to box and challenge a defender and sort of make them make a decision rather than pass around and hope that we can pull them out of position is something that really, really works for us and is really going to sort of fit the way that we're going to want to fit the way that we're going to want to play next season. I like the idea of this signing and the question is, is he right for us? And I genuinely, honestly think so. He adds a new sort of interesting profile to this midfield because if you look around the rest of the midfield, unless you're considering Brendan Aronson to be an eight, which he's more sort of a 10 inverted winger sort of thing, we don't really have that profile of midfielder at the club. Yeah, Aronson might be playing there from time to time, but having someone who is an actual dedicated midfielder that is able to do that consistently would be very, very helpful to have. And he is also very affordable due to that contract point. We are in the championship. When it comes to wages, I'm not entirely sure what he's on at the moment. I will have a very quick look for you. Um, dun, 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 Dejan Lubicic. Um, wage. He's currently on, looks like about £15,000 a week. That's very affordable for a championship club, which is kind of nice and he will go to Leeds with the understanding that from that point onwards yes there might be a wage rise in the Premier League but it's still not going to cost an absolute bomb in terms of wages people are talking like Cantwell who's at Rangers and earning significantly more than that I think Lubicic is a move that makes vastly more sense to us and another fun little fact he's already beaten Swansea on their pre-season tour which is kind of nice he already knows how to beat championship sides basically I can see this one coming whilst we are on the tour I think part of the benefit of being on tour in Germany whilst we are potentially going to sign him is the fact that, well, we're there and he can just hop over to the training camp and come back to England with the rest of the squad. There's less of that immediate jump to moving to a new country without knowing anyone. You can get to know people, have those chats and then make the move. I think that makes a lot more sense in my opinion. And he already knows Max Vuba from the Austrian national team setup, which is fantastic. But ultimately, with all of that considered, I kind of want to know what you think. I really like the look of this player. I like his profile. I like the idea that he's going to be quite attacking. There's a concern that his numbers aren't great, but you've got to take into account that he got relegated last season because of that. If you were taking into account numbers on relegated players, you would assume that Somerville and Ruter were crap, but then they played in the championship, tore it up. I think it's looking all good. Let me know what you think down below in the comments at the very least on this move. On the sort of speed of this move, it's another one that's emerged like this. And if it wasn't a rejected offer, we wouldn't have found out about it in the slightest, I don't think, until like at the very least he was having a medical. Uh, let me know sort of the direction you think this transfer window is going at the moment. I'm getting happier with it as we're going on. I thought that might be the case because patience, but we'll find out. Like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're not yet. It's always really appreciated. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you later. Tara.